Good day, students. So in this group, we're going to be going over part four of the Integrated Algebra Regions um, exam for January 2013. Uh, in this installment, we're going to be going over questions 16 to 20. All right, so for question 20, uh, I mean 16, it says, what is 24x squared y to the 6 minus 16x to the 6y squared plus 4xy squared divided by 4xy squared? So let's go ahead and set this up. Since we're dividing... Um, this entire term is set up, so 24x squared y to the 6 minus 16x to the 6y squared plus 4xy squared. Since we're dividing by 6, an easy way to do this is just simply divide every single term by 4xy squared, since that's what we're dividing by. So divide every single term by 4xy squared, like that, okay? All right. Okay, so to divide, we're going to use a law of exponents. Uh, whenever you're dividing, you subtract the exponent and keep the variable wherever the bigger exponent is, okay? So first of all, um, for the 4 and the 24, we, net, we can divide top and bottom by 4. 4 goes here 1, 4 goes here 6. So for the first term, we're going to have 6. Now for the x's, there isn't any power in this x in the denominator. So for this one, we're going to put a ver an exponent there. The default exponent, if you don't have an exponent for a variable, is 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 1 from the exponent on the top. Since the bigger exponent is upstairs, I'll just subtract 2 from 1. So it's going to be x. I'll just change the color of that. It's going to be um, x to the 2 minus 1. Okay? And then for the y... I uh, will subtract this exponent from the top. Anytime you're dividing, you subtract exponents. Anytime you're dividing exponents with the same base, so 6 minus 1. Actually, 6 minus 2. 6 minus 2. All right, so let's move to the 16 part, to the second term. So the second term, 4 divided by 16. You can divide it by 4. 4 goes here 1. 4 goes here 4. So we have 4. X to the... Now, this doesn't have any power, so we'll make it 1, like we did here. So 6 minus 1 for the x, and then y to the 2 minus 2. And then the last term, 4 goes here once, 4 goes here once. And then uh, the x's are going to, we're going to have x to the 1 minus 1. Now, we can just simply divide out the x's. But let's use the rules so we're consistent. So we have x to the 1 minus 1, and also y to the 2 minus 2. All right? So this simplifies to 6xy to the 4th minus 4x, 6 minus 1 is 5, uh, y to the 0, plus x to the 0, y to the 0, okay? The reason why I'm doing this the long way is I want you all to re remember how to um, exponent, evaluate exponents with 0 um, powers, all right? So this is going to be 6x to the 6xy to the 4th minus 4x to the 5th. Now any number raised to the 0, its power is just 1, so this whole thing is just 1, so that goes away, plus x to the 0, y to the 0 is just 1 times 1, which is just 1. And there goes your final answer, and that is option number 2. Okay? All right, let's move on to question 17. In this one, we're going to be changing units. So it says, which expression can be used to change 75 kilometers per hour to meters per minute? Okay, so if we focus our attention on the units of measure, um, if we focus on how to cancel them out in such a way that we end up with meters on the top and minutes in the denominator, that would be the answer. So we want meters in the numerator and minutes in the denominator, all right? So let's see which cancellation of units we yield this uh, situation because we want it to end up in meters per minute. Okay, all right, so don't forget, per basically means divi division, all right, so one meters per minute, this is what it should look like. All right, let's take a look at option number one. The kilometers, any kilometers cannot even cancel out, so this is not an answer at all, so that's not an option. Let's take a look at option two. See this two, the kilometers cannot cancel out, this is kilometer square. Uh, nothing cancels out here, so this is not a good option. Let's shift to option three. Let's see. Okay. The kilometers cancel out because you have a kilometer up there and a kilometer down here, so it cancels out. 
Remember, all the units must cancel out and we must have only meters on top and minutes on the bottom. All right, meters for the numerator and minutes for the denominator. So kilometers are gone, looking good. Go we'll check this out. Hours can cancel out. So this hour is downstairs and this hour is upstairs. They cancel out. And we're left with meters on top and minutes in the bottom. So that's exactly what we want. So the answer is option number three. Okay? So let's just take a look at option four, even though we know that's not the answer, just to sharpen our skills on how to change units. Notice the kilometers cancel out again because you have kilometer upstairs and downstairs and numerator and denominator. Um, wait a minute. The hours do not cancel out. So we see that this is not an answer. Okay, so the final answer is three. Okay, let's move on to question 18. All right, so it says the inequality negative two less than or equal to x less than or equal to three can be written as. Now one thing I need you to remember is that this line under the inequality symbol represents inclusion, okay? So when you have a parenthesis like this, this is uh, less than, okay? Less than. And if you have a bracket, and the bracket means inclusion, so this is less than or equal, all right? So you got to keep that in mind. And also in the other orientation, likewise, if you have a, a bracket like this, it's greater than or equal to. And then... Um, a parenthesis without the yeah the parenthesis just simply uh, a greater than symbol all right so if we have uh, these lines under the two inequalities that automatically means we must have two brackets in our interval notation okay so which of the, um, these satisfy this um, equality this condition we have two brackets so the correct answer is option number three okay I mean number four the reason why we have option four again is because we have two lines under the inequality which means we must have two brackets on the boundaries that represents the inequality okay so um, there you have it all right now um, yeah just to help you understand let me give, make up another example let's say we had negative two less than or equal to x and x is less than three in this case, this one will be written as, um, since this, the lower boundary has a line, it would be a bracket, negative 2. And then the upper boundary doesn't have a line, it would be a 3 parenthesis. So in this case, this would be option number 2. If we had negative 2 less than x, x is less than or equal to 3. Since the 3, the upper bound has a line, so that's going to give us parenthesis for the lower bound, negative 2, because there's no line here. And then for the upper bound, it's going to be a bracket because we have this line here indicating inclusion. And in that case, our answer will be option three. And then um, another situation that we have is what if both of the two endpoints are excluded from the domain? So you have no lines. If you have no lines, that basically means we'll have parentheses. In that case, we'll have negative two, parentheses, negative two, comma, three, parentheses. And that's going to be option one. All right. So... We can clearly see that since we have lines under both inequalities, we must have two brackets in our um, interval um, notation. All right, so there you go. Uh, okay, now actually this is called set builder. This is called set builder notation. This is interval and this is set builder. All right, let's move on to question 19. Um, it says the expression 6 times x to 6, 6 times 10 to the negative 7 over 3 times 10 to the negative 3 is equivalent to... So we're just going to use the law of exponents here to resolve the exponential component and just basic division for the numerical part, all right? So for the 6 over 3, we just simply divide 6 by 3, right? 6 divided by 3 is 2 times 10 to the... Now, anytime you're dividing exponents with the same base, you subtract the exponents, okay? So we have negative 7 minus... Now, you have to be really careful here. Minus negative 3, okay? There's no minus 3, it's minus negative 3 because the exponent to the denominator is negative, right? So let's simplify this a little bit. We have 2 times 10 to the negative 7 minus times the minus is plus, plus 3, okay? Which equals 2 times 10 to the negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. So the signs are different. You subtract and keep the sign of the bigger. So we can clearly see that our answer is option number 3. All right, let's move on to the last 
uh, problem in this installment, question 20 says, the roots of the equation x squared minus 14x plus 48 equals 0 are. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can plug in the values and check to see if you generate a true statement. Only one set of answers we get generate a true statement, or you can factor in and use the zero product property. All right, so I'm going to be factoring this and using the zero product property, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do it. So we have x squared minus 14x plus 48 equals zero. So I'm going to use a factoring method called the x game. I have a three-part tutorial on how to factor trinomials on math.serve.com, so you can always go there and review your factoring skills um, using those tutorials. All right, so I'm going to put AC on the top and B on the bottom. In this case, AC, A is 1, C is 48, so 48, and then B is negative 14. So we ask ourselves, what two numbers multiply to give you 48 and add to give you 14? Okay, so think about 6 times 8. Um, what is negative 6 times negative 8? Negative 6 times negative 8 is 48, and if you add them, you get 14. So that works nicely. So we're going to have x squared minus 6x minus 8x plus 48 equals 0. Okay? All right, and then to factor this, I'm going to break it down. Let's partition it down the center. What I'm doing right now is an algorithm called factoring by grouping. Okay? So let's do so um, let's factor out, let's break it down first. All right, let's factor out x from these two. So take out x, x times x minus 6. And then out of this, we take out negative 8. We're left with x minus 6 equals 0. So um, since these two quantities in the parentheses are identical, we factor them out. So we have x minus 6 times x minus 8 equals 0. All right, now use the zero product property, which involves setting each quantity to zero. And then we'll solve um, algebraically for x, okay? All right, so to solve this, we add six to both sides. So the first answer is six. And in this one, we add eight to both sides. And the next answer is eight, okay? So um, our answers are six and eight. Clearly, option four, number four is our correct answer, all right? So there you have it. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here so that you can get um, updates on the, so the upcoming installments of this review series. Please post a comment to let me know what you think about this video and you can also click like if you liked it. More clips can be found on mapcodeserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.